scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We thank you for the privilege of hearing you speak, seeing you walk in our midst, and becoming testaments of your power and your grace. Lord, we thank you for this great mighty vision thank you for giving us an opportunity to tabernacle in your presence again we pray by the power of the holy spirit that tonight's meeting will indeed shift us to new dimensions in the spirit in the name of jesus that whilst the word is coming let lives be transformed let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered and Lord, we pray that all who are connecting from across the globe, let tonight be their night in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Only, it is only when we get to heaven that we will really be able to comprehend the depth of the transformation that has happened in lives to lives as a result of Pastor Jerry and his dear wife. Um, let me tell you the truth. There is no, there is no human mechanism of measuring spiritual impact. All the indices that we have are only a failed attempt to give us a picture of the kinds of transformation. There are people today who have been saved simply because of their encounter with the man of God, either through his teachings, but more importantly, the prayer platform. Hallelujah. The lives that have been changed, the lives that have been healed, the discipline that has come upon many believers to be consistent in their prayer lives. It, it was as though many people were praying for a, a way to be guided into consistency. This was the culture of the early church. That was why they were extremely powerful. They had what they called the hour of prayer. It was while Peter and John were on their way to honor that mystery that a man's miracle happened. And so, Pastor Jerry and your dear wife, I truly love you and we honor and salute what God has done and continues to do in and through your life across the nations of the earth. And, and I say this sincerely from my heart, we must learn to celebrate and honor people who God is used. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Hold on, please, just for a moment. I can tell you firsthand that it takes tremendous sacrifice as a lifestyle and then spiritual discipline and capacity to be able to capture some things from the realm of the spirit and to reveal it to a generation. And if and when we find people who can so labor to give their all, they are worthy of our honor. Can you bless Pastor Jerry and his dear wife again one more time? Thank you, Pastor Jerry. God bless you. Bless your dear wife in the name of jesus christ when i held her hands to greet her i said you have the strength of 30 men in one incredibly amazing woman of god let's bless her again 
please be seated. You know, interestingly, Pastor Jerry began to touch on my teaching tonight, and I was just watching him and rejoicing over the power of discernment and exactitude in the spirit. I'll be sharing with us as my contribution um, for this conference a few truths especially about the ministry of the Holy Spirit tonight that I think would help and guide us conferences like this help to build us not just for the year but to equip us to make strategic progress first in our spiritual lives and then it extends to every aspect of our lives we rise in this kingdom by and through our access to light it takes more than desire to rise we must access high level spiritual illumination hallelujah so let's look at a few scriptures and then see how god will help us in this service and for those who are following from across the globe please connect with your heart we're here at ron conference and we believe in the name of jesus that as it happens here so it will happen to you wherever you are in the name of jesus psalm 18 and verse 29 psalm 18 and verse 29 it says for by thee i have run through a troop and by my god i have leaped over a wall if you remove for by thee and you remove by my god this is how that statement to be read i have run through a troop i have leaped over a wall that will sound like a man's ability a man's excellency and here he tells us that if you ever see me run through a troop and you ever see me leap over a wall make no mistakes about it there is an agency that was outsourced beyond my ability he says for by thee i have run through a troop many times in our world we would not like to read the first three words because it is always very marketable to give a picture of invincibility and human power it looks very very disappointing when you express the semblance of weakness with respect to god's power we usually would like to take credit behind the exploits that we do as humans but here is a very wise man not only telling you his exploits but connecting the basis for it for by thee are we together already I have run through a troop and by my God I have leaped over a wall. Second scripture please. First Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6. Prophet Samuel said something there very very interesting and powerful. And Samuel said unto the people it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and that brought your fathers up out of the land of egypt it is the lord that advanced moses it is the lord that advanced moses if you were to look at moses and aaron you would simply see a prophet who kept moving from one level of grace one level of achievement to the other and here is the prophet saying behind the fearful exploits of the man moses and even aaron there was an invisible hand the lord himself that advanced moses and aaron a scripture that has become a personal anthem in my life is second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5 it's a scripture that has ministered very deeply through the years. It says not that we are sufficient of ourselves. Very profound admission to think anything as of ourselves. But it says straight up that our sufficiency. You know what sufficiency is? The capacity to rise up to the occasion. Never disappointing. When you are sufficient, it means you are always in order. When you are sufficient, it means there is no possibility for disappointment from your own end. And he says that capacity, that faculty to always live up to expectations. He said no man by himself, unassisted, possesses that ability to always meet up standards. He says our sufficiency is of God. 
Let's read verse 6. It says, who has made us abled. He gave us an ability. He has made us abled ministers. Hallelujah. Now, in this kingdom, God designed this kingdom to function in a way that you will always meet points in your Christian experiences that would reveal to you how helpless or incapacitated you are. It was intentionally designed by God. It was a system to keep us in need of him as well as reveal our pride that happens after little results. Are we together now? So no matter how godless or no matter how sincere you are, eventually you will meet occasions in your life where you will be given the liberty even without god if you choose to stretch your creativity your intelligence your imagination and god will insist that by your imagination and your wisdom you are not able to solve that problem in that state you are left with two choices number one to break down in humility and admit that you are limited and from that standpoint of humility, you now approach the all-sufficient God because his strength does not come upon strength. When his strength comes and meets strength, it goes back until what you call strength is depleted. Then you now see the value of his strength upon your weakness. When Paul cried to him because of the thorn in his flesh, he simply gave him this answer, my strength is sufficient in your weakness paul for as long as you believe that it was because you are a scribe for as long as you believe that it's in the vastness of your education my strength has no ministry in your life i can be patient even if it's for 10 years and leave you to exhaust everything that looks like god are we together there are many, many people today that the delay in their life is God waiting for them to exhaust what looks like strength. So that you do not confuse the person who gave you that result. Remember in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he began to warn them. He said, let it not be that when you have built houses, you have done this and that, that you will say, God does not take that kind of risk with men. The difference has to be clear that he is the one behind it. Are we together? That means the earlier a man comes to a point of admission that I am limited, you have designed your speed system. That your life will perpetually be pegged at the instance and at the level of your pride. Provided you do not see the need for the help of God. Are we, are we following now? yes now you do not have to be an evil person you just have to be human hallelujah it takes a lot for a natural man to come to a point where you see and admit that you are limited it is not usual with men because from the world system the applause you receive is to the degree to which they perceive you to be superhuman or invincible when you watch programs, you see people who display talents and the ones who display unusual talents are usually awarded. So it is, it is not human to admit weakness. There has to be a process that you pass through with God that brings you to a point where you acknowledge that our sufficiency is not of ourselves. Are we still together now? Yes. Jesus, knowing this about men, set that example with himself. Can you imagine that the God of the heavens, the God of creation, when he stripped himself and came as a little baby, at age 30, Jesus himself refused to start ministry or to start any exploit for that matter, even though he was born the word. But he was not born a man. But the moment he became a man, he knew that the weaknesses in all men was also in him. The Bible says he was in every way tempted. Is that in your Bible? Yes. And so, immediately without waste of time, he went straight to embrace the ministry of the Spirit. You would read the Bible and see how Jesus declared helplessness about himself as though he forgot he were God. I can of my own self do nothing. Realize who is speaking. The word incarnate. 
how could you make such a statement that almost sounds like blasphemy that I can of my own haven't told them before your Abraham before your father Abraham was I am now you are saying I can of my own do nothing hallelujah and he embraced the ministry of the Holy Spirit and that opened him to an incredible and an invincible life he brought dimensions of kingdom reality that many of the people only read in scripture and the scribes and the pharisees began to wonder then they started bringing all kinds of descriptions to explain what they were seeing for instance in one incident they said this man is beelzebub he has to use the prince of demons because it is not human how would you speak and then demons just leave they didn't see that kind of thing you had to stone the one possessed together with the demons to die two of them you destroy the body then the demon looks for another body here is a man who can separate with surgical precision the problem from the victim and preserve the victim while the problem goes away and they said no this is not by human strength hallelujah when they heard him speak even in the synagogue he displayed a level of wisdom they wondered what sort of wisdom is this and now jesus got to a point with the disciples at this point the disciples were confused they were perplexed wondering what kind of man are you we grew up with you knowing your earthly father and your mother but you are displaying possibilities that are beyond the realm and the scope of human intelligence now he begins to introduce them to this personality called the holy spirit are we together now notice that jesus was not in a hurry to talk to them about the holy spirit when he started his mentorship session with them you would think the first topic he should go to was the topic of the spirit he began with what we call the beatitudes teaching them on the realities of the kingdom bringing to their awareness a new culture i always wondered why he delayed on the subject of the holy spirit notice that the teaching coincided with their frustrations they were angry and started asking themselves, look, we left all to follow you. What is in this? The more they acknowledged their weaknesses, they were pushing him to that subject. Are we together now? Finally, they get to the subject of the Holy Spirit. Then he begins to talk to them about this paraclet. This one whom they could not see, but he credited his exploits, even as the word incarnate to the Spirit. He began to use names like comforter. He began to use names like the spirit of truth. He began to use names like helper. Now at that point they did not understand. Are we together now? When we get to John 16, that should be John 16. Give us verse 12. He says, I have many things to say unto you. Jesus himself. Jesus did not hide his frustration even in mentoring the disciples because they were carnally minded. And the Bible says that a carnal man, a natural man, cannot receive of spiritual things. He said, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. 13, he says, how be it? In other words, find comfort. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he says he will guide you into how many? all truth all truth the god that knows all truth must be fearful he will guide you into all truth then he says for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and then he will show you things to come the disciples thought they understood what jesus said quite honestly they did not understand what jesus said because if you really understand if, if, if you understood what Jesus said, there are some questions that should follow. They didn't ask it, meaning they were not interested. All they were interested in was the restoration of the kingdom of Israel, where there would be a king and they would get their rewards for living, fishing and following Jesus. That was all their concern. They didn't follow him just because of love. Here was someone who had proposed a more superior life. And they hoped that with his invincible power, he would dethrone Herod one day and be king. Then they would be members of his cabinet. That was the whole journey of their discipleship. There was nothing eternal or souls. That was none of their business. That was why when Jesus died, they were angry. 
when he said he was leaving they said where are you going to we left our wives we left fishing you have troubled the roman government and you are leaving it was not compassion it was anger they said you are not going anywhere you fermented trouble all over rome now you want to leave peter said you are not going it is the reason why when they finally caught jesus their hopes were dashed this man who raised the dead so there is weakness in you judas was so confident about his power he could even make money from him because he he could make money because he knew that if they came to catch jesus he would make a mess of them that was why judas could not even use the money these guys had so trusted the invincibility of jesus they started inventing skills to cash out of that power. Now, follow me closely, please. Are we together now? Now Jesus gives himself to die. And all of them are amazed. Peter is disappointed. The disciples run away. Then he leaves to die. And Peter, in his frustration, goes back to fishing. I wasted three and a half years of my life following someone who proposed a more superior way of living let me not make a fool of myself and the bible says in john chapter 21 that peter said i go a fishing and the disciples say we go with you in other words look this is over let's just be on our way going suddenly while they were at the seashore laboring for nothing because you see there are times you may have heard me say when your net is correct there are times when your location is correct the sea there are times when your skill is correct, yet you will still not catch fish. I do not see anything wrong as far as producing results is concerned. Peter was a skilled fisherman. His nets were the right tools. The boat was there. The sea was the right place, yet there was no catch. Now, that was, it was at that point that Jesus showed up. And he looks at them and says, little children, have you any catch? And Peter wondering, who is this man? Notice every time Jesus saw insufficiency, he quickly rushed to explain something. There is something with the dealings of God with men that the weakness of men attracts God so much to them because it is, is a vocal expression of the need for his ministry in their lives. Are we together now? Every in the healing of Jesus... Anytime people express weakness and limitation, he, he responded to them immediately, including blind Bartimeo, thou son of David. I don't know what is the formula for getting your attention, but please, by all means, I just know you are the son of David. Have mercy on me. The woman with the issue of blood. Every time Jesus saw people declaring their weakness and their need for him or for God, he responded. This is a very powerful secret. I know why I'm telling you this because there are so many people who wonder why the Holy Ghost cannot do much in them because you are approaching God from a standpoint of strength and sufficiency and the Holy Spirit is so gentle that your pride is a voice that can drive him. It is true. It is the reason why in using men, he will usually use very weak men. Ordinary men that do not have the comeliness that you may think should be desired. So that the excellency of power, you can see the difference between the man and the man anointed. Are we together? Yeah. So Jesus began to talk to them about the Holy Spirit. And then he spoke very profoundly when they received the Holy Ghost. They began to understand the things that he said. Then we get to the Pauline epistle. This strange man who now had an encounter with the spirit. And he made a very profound statement. Romans 8.26. I hope and pray that we are following. Romans 8.26. Let's read together if you can see it. Ready? One to read. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Please stop. The Bible says that same spirit... That there are many things that he does in the life of the believer. And among them, Paul is teaching them by revelation that the Holy Spirit can help our infirmity. The word infirmity there was not accurately translated because it would look like sickness. The word there should be limitation, not just bodily or 
um, maybe some kind of biological deformity. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our limitations. That every time a man is limited spiritually, financially, organizationally, you are calling for the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But that rule number one, you must come to a point where you acknowledge your limitation. This is not, this is not some kind of demeaning who you are in Christ. It's a state of acceptance and admission that except God helps me. Now you understand the scripture. It is by thee that I run through a troop. It is by my God that I leap over a wall. He took out time to emphasize the basis for his results. Hallelujah. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. John chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. He says, for no man can do these miracles and accept the Lord be with him. There are results that you cannot get alone except the Lord be with you. In fact, there are dimensions of results in this kingdom that implicate you immediately that you have done business with the realm of the spirit, whether diabolically or genuinely. But out of the assistance of the realm of the spirit, there are heights you cannot attain. It is not given unto men. Whether it is Janus and Jambers or Moses, turning a rod to a snake needs power. Whether it is by God or by magic, in either ways, there has to be a partnership with the realm of the spirit. Why am I saying this? Because there are people in this conference who this year you will command this very strange order of results in the name of Jesus Christ. That you will not only celebrate what God is doing in the life of your man of God and his dear wife, but that you will access a potent secret. By mid-year when you look at your life, People will have to call you and say, tell me the truth. Is there anything you need to open up to me about? Because I do not understand the you of January and the you of now. What suddenly happened? When they looked at Saul, they said, when has Saul become a prophet? What happened to you? We knew when you left home helplessly, clueless, with no, if you were that much of a prophet, why did you have to look for a donkey for three days? That now you are returning with precision and even prophesying. Let me speak over someone in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. I decree and declare by God who helps men and by the power that raised Christ from the dead. You will access superior help from the spirit and begin to command results in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit. Behind the exploits of great men in the kingdom is the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Unassisted by the spirit of grace, you cannot produce results that is consistent with the might and the power of God. No man can do these things except God be with him. No man can do these things except God be with him. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word following. You read from scripture and you read even through modern history. All of the men and women, especially within the church circle, who were mightily used by God in their generations. They were men and women, some uneducated, some weak. Some came from backgrounds of all kinds of things. Regardless of those limitations, you listen to their story. The punchline in their story is when they encountered this spirit of God called the Holy Spirit. At that point, things began to shift in their lives. Ordinary women encountered the spirit of God. And some of them, though naive, though uneducated, inexposed, he began to help them and they commanded levels of dominion and power that was global. Regardless the limitations that came with their generation. Let me tell you one truth. There is no describing how far the Spirit of God is able to take a man and to help a man. I am saying it to you today. If you ever see anybody that you admire, whether used by God in ministry like your man of God or in business, any dimension of kingdom exploit, 
provided it is revealing Jesus, the signature of the Spirit must be there. By this teaching, immediately God is telling someone, if you don't give up on your strength, you will only recycle last year, this year. Regardless what prophecy comes, by ignoring the Holy Spirit, you will abort the potency of the word. The Bible said the seed was the word, yet it still died because of the soil it came upon. Are we together now? Yes. I learned this very early. How helpless a man can be in ministry. Respectfully speaking, there are people in ministry struggling from pillar to post, trying all kinds of formulas in isolation to the ministry and the help of the Holy Spirit. And they find out that by the arm of the flesh shall no man prevail. The world is too busy, too selfish, and too wicked for people to dedicate their attention to you. It takes a force that is not human to coordinate people to look at you, know you love, no, no. Except you do not, you've not lived long enough in this world. What will make a man wake up from his house and think about you and call you and say for the rest of your life I want to bless you. That man who wants to bless you has relatives who are in need. It does not just happen. Listen to me very carefully. You are a man of God just because you are sincere and a person of character. It's not enough to make people leave their homes to come and to submit, to sit down, to listen and to learn. No, no, no. How about resources? It is one thing to have your skill like Peter and you will be at the sea and yet you will not catch fish. At that point, you don't need fishing again. You need a superior dimension of help. It is not because you are in Abia. It is simply because there is a dimension of grace and help that you have not accessed. This is my assignment tonight. To introduce you to take away struggling and weariness. And bring us to a point where you are empowered by a dimension of sufficiency. That you will walk out of this meeting tonight rejoicing. Knowing that every prophetic word that came from the man of God to you. Was spoken because he expected that in receiving it you will honor the ministry of the Holy Spirit. To make it come to pass. If Jesus, the son of the living God, did not ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit, as the word incarnate, he made himself so helpless, the Bible even said, of no reputation, and he would speak again and again by the Spirit. The Spirit was behind the mighty things that Jesus did. A carpenter's son who became the savior of the world. In fact, the Bible even says, if that same Spirit that raised him, raised him, that body was lying down there and the spirit of grace came, raised him back to life again. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit largely and even those who talk about the Holy Spirit only focus on his power. And they do not even care about a relationship to understand the dynamics of his help. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the most classic scripture that talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit. This was a statement by Jesus himself. He said, but you shall receive power after. Somebody say power after. The sequence matters. Power after. Power is only relevant when it comes after. Not power before. Not power during. Power after the Holy Ghost. Power after the Holy Ghost. Power after the Holy Ghost. Wisdom after the Holy Ghost. Miracles after the Holy Ghost. He must precede them all and he must be greater than them all. But here is what we do. Power through or by the Holy Ghost. We are not interested in the relationship. I hear you hold power to heal the sick, to open up doors, to bring finances. Can you borrow me that power so I can shine while you stand? I don't need you. I just know that something about you can make me powerful. But follow the protocol. Power after. Power after. Check this against your, the, your Christian pursuit. If your power, your quest for power is before the ministry of the Holy Ghost, you are already at the corridors of compromise. When God calls you, he does not give you power. When he calls you, he gives you himself. 
He said, come, follow me, not follow it. Follow me. When God calls you, he does not even give you an assignment. Your calling is to God. Your mission is now to the world. When he calls people, he does not call them to do things. He calls them to follow him. Follow me and I will make you. When I make you, I now send you. The empowerment is at the point of being sent, not being called. You see, when he calls you, you don't need power. You need humility to learn. When he sends you, he now sends you with power. Most of us have been called, but we have not been sent. And the reason is you will know you have not been sent because the power that backs up your being sent has not been given. But the itch to go, it is true that your calling is genuine, but have you been sent? He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? The plethora of lack and insufficiency is proof that the door has not been opened for you. That means you should stay, follow me, not follow it. I don't know if God is speaking to someone. He's saying many things to many of us. For some of us, God is saying, mark time with this ministry thing and get back to the secret place. The truth is that the power that follows the assignment has not yet come. You cannot hide, you cannot hide power. It's like pregnancy. A woman who is nine months and is not aware, will she look normal? Even if she does not know what is wrong, she cannot be normal. Not at nine months. Such as I have. My point is, when did he know he had it? Because once upon a time, he did not have it. And he knew he didn't have it. Now he has the boldness to say, Mister, I know what I have and I, don't, I know what I do not have. I'm still learning about prosperity. Silver and gold I do not have. I'm still learning. I can't, I can't guarantee on that. But this one, I have it already.